So I have an 01 Articat 500cc 4x4 automatic, and I'm having some trouble with the transmission. Uh, it started the day that I bought it from the neighbors, it was just several weeks ago. I tried to pull a tree off of the trail with it, and even when shifted into low range, the machine did not have enough power to pull the tree. Traction wasn't an issue, the wheels weren't spinning, but which means that something in the transmission, the clutches or the belt or something, must have been slipping. I also bought a twin to this, a manual transmission one, and put that into low range, and that pulled the tree very easily. And I, kind of, I thought it was kind of strange. I would have thought that if the manual had the power to pull it, this should also have the power to pull it. But I kept riding it, and it seemed to run fine until a week ago I took it out. When I was revving the throttle, I didn't hear the usual kind of whirring, moaning sound that comes from the transmission. But at one point, it was actually making a strange... It's kind of hard to describe, maybe like a shrieking sound, or, you know, almost like a like a bearing would make if a bearing were bad. And, you know, I, I rode a little ways down the road and I started to smell some, you know, burning. I'm not sure whether it was a hot clutch or the belt burning. So I decided to open up the cover and have a look. The belt seems to be in about perfect condition to me. It doesn't look like it's cracked or anything. The edges to me seem to be in pretty good condition. I mean, maybe they're slightly worn down. Uh, the machine only has 1,100 miles on it. So, you know, this should essentially be a, a like a brand new belt. I, From what I understand, these things will last a very long time. You know, maybe a few thousand miles, if not the life of the machine. And... I actually did get a new belt because I figured as long as I had this thing apart uh, I didn't want to be without a belt if I found out that the belt was severely worn but if I put the new one up to the old one it feels exactly the same thickness as the belt that's on there uh, it feels fine on the side for comparison Now, really, it's just because I've got the belts in this position. It looks like the new one is thicker than the old one, but, you know, again, it's not. I can feel that they're the same thickness. But, you know, in, in feeling it, you probably could see right there that some, uh, some dust, you know, I assume that it's belt dust, came off onto my fingernail right there. And there is quite a bit of that around. It's caked inside of there, inside of there, and inside of there. And as soon as I took the uh, took the air duct off, there was a clump of it sitting right there on top of the belt. Now, the other problem was acorns. The mice had been dropping stuff in there. And I actually did run this after I had the cover off just to make sure that the, uh, um, I guess the clutching mechanisms were working correctly. And yes, the, you know, that plate was moving in, or actually rather, this plate was moving out and the inner one on the back was moving in as speeds increased. So that's working as it should, but you might be able to see back there there's a lot of junk and what I'm starting to wonder is if an acorn got wedged inside of one of those things and was stopping uh, stopping the whole thing from turning and thus making the belt slip and making the smell 
I, I will say that even after that, that time that I had started it and it was behaving strangely, I did take it down the road and I did take it up a very steep hill, which when I had gone up it shortly after I got the four-wheeler, I just drove right up it in high range with no problem. And this time there were some spots that in high range I had to put it in on full throttle. And um, I'm not sure if I actually had to stop to put it in low range, but um, it, it was an issue getting up the hill. And then going down the hill, I was in low range using engine braking. And I did have it in four wheel drive, so I don't think traction was an issue. And the, Either, either the clutches or a belt may have been slipping. But, you know, if I'm looking at it, I just can't, I just can't imagine that this belt is bad. Now, you know, please give me a break. This is the very first time I've ever actually dealt with a CVT. So if you're looking at this and thinking, you know, I'm such an idiot and that's clearly worn down, you need to replace it, well, please just, uh, <laughs> you know, let me know with some gentle criticism and I will do what I need to do. I'll replace that belt if I need to, but right now I just can't justify it. So my plan for right now is tomorrow when it's light out, I'll clean out all the rest of that, take it outside and blow it out with the air compressor, put it back together and you know, perhaps some of the, the junk that the mice brought in was just interfering with the movement of everything. Um, the, the only other thing that kind of concerns me is if you look at how nice and shiny and smooth that uh, shaft is as compared to that one. Now, if you come over and look at the bearings, That one down in there is clean. You can see, I assume that's a little bit of grease down there. When I turn it, there are no noise and, that, and no play in it. But same with the one down there, which correlates with this shaft. That looks weird. Now this is actually the first time I'm looking at this really closely, but looking down in there, it's, I'm starting to suspect that actually that bearing might might be seized and it might be turning on that shaft. Perfect. And that one not as good. But I know it looks it looks worse on camera than it does in real life. And if I run my finger in there it does not feel scored on the inside. So Maybe it did just get a little bit wet after all. I don't know, uh, any suggestions for next steps would be appreciated. Thank you.